No. This is pretty cool. They can send it and then it's all you got to do. I'd like to call the December 4th, 2018 Planning and Zoning Board for the City of Light Lighthouse Point to order. Um, could we have a roll call, Terry, please? Yes. Michael Cohen? Bill Gallo? Here. Kenton Heideck? Here. Mark Mackey? Here. Susan Motley? Here. Fred McLean? Here. Dennis Smith? I'm here. Um, everybody in the audience, if you would please uh, silence your cell phones. You can, you can leave them on, but just put the ringer on silent, please. All those who intend to give testimony at any of the hearings tonight, if you would please stand and raise your right hand. David, would you swear in those who are going to testify, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, if you are here tonight and you're even thinking about testifying, it'll make things go a lot easier to stand and be sworn in at this time. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth of you guys? Yes. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you all. Um, the minutes from the November 6th meeting, I have one change I would like to uh, make to them, and that's in the... Um, in the part that's that right before, on the second page, it says discussion on proposed conceptual zoning changes. Um, I would like to add in there that I also was not present due to a conflict of interest, and Bill Gallo acted as chair. Does anybody have a problem with that? No. no. Um, anybody else have any other changes they would like to make? No. Hearing none, would somebody like to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes for second. November 6, 2018. And I heard a second, second. from Fred. Any uh, other comments? And that's with, with the amendment. With the yes. amendment? Yes. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Okay. So we're going to move on to our first case. Our first case is case number 18-15, Beacon Light Shopping Center. 1807 Northeast 24th Street site plan modification. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Gallo. I announce a conflict. <laughs> um, my firm is the architect for this application, so I will recuse myself and hand in my form. That would be perfectly good. <laughs> uh, but we do have somebody that's going to present to us? Yes. Or will you be? No. Okay. <laughs> um, so whoever's here for the city, would you describe this, please, Michelle? That would be me. For the record, Michelle Malgren, I'm the consulting planner for the City of Lighthouse Point. This is, as the chairman indicated, a site plan amendment. The applicant is requesting a site plan modification to add four separate outdoor dining areas throughout the shopping center along with some facade enhancements and renovations. Um, each area would be set on uh, sand set pavers. There's new landscaping that's proposed. Uh, within or adjacent to each of the new outdoor seating areas. And the outdoor dining areas that are adjacent to Federal Highway will have what they call a two-foot crash walls to protect uh, patrons from vehicular traffic. The Community Appearance Board approved the facade treatments and design aspects of the outdoor dining area on August 16, 2018, uh, with the addition to change the paint on the upper portion of the building from a Renwick Olive SW2815 to a Greek Villa SW7551 and ensuring that the umbrellas will be of a high-quality product to ensure that there won't be any uh, fading or peeling. Um, and the motion passed CAB unanimously 6-0. That concludes my presentation. So, Michelle, what is your opinion about the uh, proposal? We recommend approval. The city recommends yes. approval. I have a question. Susan? Um, Michelle, I didn't see any mention of how it affects the parking. At all. So there are a total of six spaces that will be eliminated, as, but there was an ordinance passed by the um, city, has not yet been codified, it was before my time, so I think more than a year ago, to address just the situation for parking um, for shopping centers of this size. Uh, the ordinance, I took a quick look at it, did note that there were no issues found with parking, and I will also note that I believe that the parking requirement here in Lighthouse Point is one space for 200, which is... It's a pretty strict parking requirement for commercial. Normally, you see it at one to two fifty. So you felt the parking was still adequate on the site. Yes. Okay. Thank Anything you. Anything else? No. That's Fred? it. No. Um, I don't have any questions. Who is here for the applicant? Oh. 
Uh, if you would please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address, please. Um, my name is Alan Desi. I'm with Gallo Hobart Architects. My last name is spelled D-E-Z-I-I. -I. Uh, we're looking at 1311 uh, West Newport uh, Center Drive West um, in Deerfield Beach. And I am rep we are representing the applicant for uh, Beacon Light. Um, and uh, Michael Collin, uh, the owner of Beacon Light, is also here. He may chime in a little bit. If he, uh, were you if sworn in questions. when everybody that was sworn in yes. before? Mm -hmm. Great. So um, as you uh, described, um, the improvements are minimal for the project. Um, we're adding two new, uh, you know what, I might as well just put a little easel. Is that okay if I put that up? Mm -hmm. or sure. Or, sure. Yeah. Uh, let the record show that we have another member joining us. Kenton um, has joined us. Sorry. Hi, Kenton. Hello. <laughs> So I know uh, you all, you know, got a lot of engineer draw engineering drawings and a lot of black and white and, and data and all that stuff. So I just thought I'd kind of walk you through the project and introduce Could you a little you, bit. Hold on one second. Sure. Would you offer this to anybody in the audience that would like to see it because they can't see what you have on that easel? They're welcome to have my set so that they can look at it if they'd like or somebody would like to look at it. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put up these uh, little renderings out here so the audience can see. That'd be great. Thank you. So there's really um, three parts to this project. Um, one is uh, the uh, addition of some uh, 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 removal of a couple of uh, six parking spaces and creating some uh, little dining, outdoor dining areas. And they're about approximately 20 feet by 20 feet. Um, and then we're also expanding the, the, uh, the dining areas that are on the corners. So we're making those a little bit bigger. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the second part, obviously, is um, for the uh, plans that we submitted, is to uh, refresh the, the center, with a, re repainting the center. And then we're also doing a little bit of lighting um, through some grill work and uh, to try to uh, visually stimulate, get people from the street to, um, to see the center. And expanding these out here on the, on the street also will help um, have a bigger street presence, you know, for the uh, uh, passer people that are passing by and kind of maybe start stimulating that type of activity throughout Lighthouse Point. So there's, um, and all these uh, terraces are associated with new landscaping, and like I said, some lighting, we've got some crash wall, uh, some walls that are kind of meandering in the front to protect the, the patrons, and then the interior ones uh, are hedged with uh, bottles to protect the people that are sitting there. So, uh, this view here, uh, it's a little rendering of the corner. This is actually built now. The uh, Sicilian oven has just uh, been completed and uh, it's doing quite well. And so that's the kind of, you know, um, sustainable kind of stimulation that we're trying to give the center to make it more walkable and more urban, uh, create that type of context. Um, so the uh, idea here is uh, we're, we're going to repaint the center, uh, get away from that monochromatic um, scheme that's there and you can work with some bigger chunks of color so you can kind of identify where you are in the center a little bit better. And uh, we're going to add some texture with some real work on the towers and, um, and accent those with some lighting. Yeah. This one here is a view of one of the typical uh, little enclaves, little uh, eating terraces that are uh, strategically placed um, within the plaza. We kind of wanted to hit the corners, and then we have one that's more centralized. But uh, so these are these are the hedged in uh, little uh, eating terraces. Uh, they seat uh, you know with some outdoor seating. Uh, we got some lighting for it, for it, and just uh, allows the, it creates the little 
points of interest um, along the shopping center uh, to make it more walkable and uh, kind of take off with a new kind of vision for this shopping center for the next 20 years and so forth. And, and on. So, And in this view, is uh, the little uh, lighting feature, the little grill work that we're doing. And uh, these are panels that are standoffs. They're cut out the plasma cut panels out of aluminum. They're going to stand off the building. And uh, we have uh, these, uh, what we call uh, bra uh, brazers. They're long linear lights that shine up behind it, so it'll give it, you know, we'll get some some uh, play with shadow and, and so forth. So those are really what will uh, make it the, uh, create this kind of iconic feel to the project, that, especially at night, and it also will raise the project, make it feel taller. So it's kind of a low, rambling type of uh, project right now. And um, so we're, as you can see, these are some of the big chunks of colors that are being introduced. And um, you think that that type of thing, you know, there's a little more contemporary than what's out there now. And it's a little kind of monochromatic, plus it's, the salmon color is kind of faded now, so it's due. So with that, there's three elements is really what's going to, um, what this whole project is about, basically. Brett, any questions? One quick question on the slide, or the uh, board before this one. That's the Lido's corner now, is that correct? Yes. Is that really grass coming out to the right on the slide there? Over here? Yeah. Uh, there's, um, there's, there's grass, and, but there are some uh, uh, backflow preventers, preventers that are there as well. And there is a little walkway that may not be shown right Because that, I mean, that's a little where you extra. turn the corner, I and mean, that's fully paved now, correct? Yeah. 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 Where this is right now, this is where we're actually um, taking that away and creating, putting the pavers in and creating these little terraces. Right, yeah, I was asking about the green spot, you know, yeah. what looks like grass extending can, out. Can you go back to, to your right first line. picture? Because I think that okay, will, how we do it, yeah. that'll answer your question, but no, the one, one before that. The site plan. Yeah, you're talking about Up the there. Center. Yeah, center square. Center square, sir. Right. Yeah, okay. So you're going to add grass there as well, because there's no grass there now. Right. Yeah. Right. So I think there's a walkway, and the idea would be to, there's, that walkway's not, there should be a walkway shown right here. I don't know that right. is a, but it, it's, it's not a narrowing a drive-through area. Right. Exactly. The area where you can pass exactly. through. Anything else? Yeah, I notice you have names of some stores that are not <laughs> located at that yeah. shopping center. What's and, that all about? Well, uh, and that's something that maybe Michael can talk about. And, and uh, what we're trying to uh, work with is uh, the way the sign ordinance is actually written. Is there a way you know, to be a little bit more... Uh, have signage that's a little bit more corporate as opposed to this very, you know, regulated type of signage where everybody's sign looks identical. Mm -hmm. And so this would kind of give the people that, the tenants, it, it actually will attract a, a new level, of, uh, some new tenants and, and, and people that would, you know, that want to. I, I think what Susan's talking about is you had one sign that said Disney. Disney, <laughs> Junior, you well, have Kelly's. And, and that was, that's yeah, more what she's talking with, about. Yeah. Yeah. Not how it looks, but the Right. We were just right. playing with. Are you are you telling us something, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh, yeah. Michael's idea. Um, but uh, no, we, we, <laughs> yeah. uh, Michael Colon, 1807 Northeast 24th Street, Lighthouse Point. Um, the signage was just simply put up for a conceptual purpose. Um, we're trying to take this property in a whole new direction for the next 20 years, as opposed to where it's been the last 20 years. When we built it, it was all the rage to have red signs on a, on a monochromatic building, uh, subtle paint changes. Today, if you build a building, you can build a brand new one, and uh, things have changed out there. Nobody does that anymore. Uh, if, you, if you put sort of a... Uh, like a pastel on a pastel with a subtle change. It looks old the day you build it. Everything that's going up has bold changes. Uh, they've got the outdoor areas. They're bringing the outdoors inside and the inside outdoors. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, color and vibrancy and light. It's what the people want. It's what's happening, and that's what we're doing. But the, no, that the, the, the tenant names aren't meant to indicate anything. It's just the concept. And we're not here tonight 
looking right. for an approval on a signage thing. It's yeah, well, I, I think uh, we were just kidding about that. Susan, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think those were all of our questions. I think so. Um, we'll, we will open this up to the public. Would anybody from the public like to come forward and ask anybody here a question? or provide us a statement about anything relating to this application, please come forward. When you come forward, please say your name, spell your last name, and give us your address, please. Well, I guess I know on which matter you're here for. Uh, okay, so I'll close the public hearing. Uh, I don't see any reason to turn this down. Is there any discussion? Any <laughs> No, I'm, I think it's a wonderful suggestion, proposal. Um, somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve agenda item four, case number 18-15, Beacon Light Shopping Center site plan modification. A second? A second. Any further discussion? Um, Sherry, let's vote. Okay. Fred McLean? Yes. Susan Motley? Yes. Hinton Hodden? Yes. Dennis Smith? Yes. So we pass it, Michael. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Looks like a really nice improvement. <laughs> okay, the next item, um, would somebody let Bill know that he can come back? Because <laughs> he was late. Yeah. <laughs> Shortly. <laughs> Um, the next item on the agenda is a uh, is a discussion regarding parking on residential streets by contractors, and I, I think it goes a little further. It's also the blocking off of roads um, in a number of our residential districts by contractors on those roads. Oh, there you are. Hello, glad you're back. Um, the mayor and uh, Glenn, if you're here probably be good for you to come up. The mayor has asked us to look into this and see if there's an ordinance that we might put together to recommend something to uh, modify for the commission to consider. So Glenn, would you elucidate a little more, please? Um, over the last several months, uh, there's been a lot of complaints about parking on residential streets, particularly in construction areas. And uh, after looking at some of these issues and listening to the complaints of the residents on the streets, uh, I thought using your planning function, it might be a good idea for the Planning and Zoning Board to consider what, if anything, should be recommended to the City Commission as far as an ordinance to uh, possibly limit it, regulate it, uh, do something. Um, I know in certain areas, uh, 31st Avenue as an example, Lake Placid area, we've had a lot of complaints. Um, I had uh, residents calling me two weeks ago complaining that they couldn't get down the street. Um, there's been other, other areas of the city, the same things happen. So that being street. 28th Street, 28th, yeah, right. right. And uh, it seems to go on when the construction is not a lot of planning that goes on with the contractors, coordination, things like that. So uh, just respectfully like you to think about whether or not you'd like to take this up as an item. Uh, it's not something we're asking you to decide tonight, but we're at, other than to decide whether or not you want to put this as a discussion item for future agendas. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Anybody questions for the mayor? No. no. Um, uh, what I would like to see us do is invite some local contractors who do a lot of residential to come in and talk to us. I'd like to see if we could get David to find out what other cities are doing and do a presentation to us about that. I'd like to see if the, maybe Michelle could find somebody or more than one somebody that in their planning functions works on issues like this that could come and do a presentation to us so that we could see if there's reasonable things that could be done um, by an ordinance that could help some of our residents. I mean, we certainly don't want to stop construction. On the other hand, we don't want the contractors to eliminate why it's so nice living in Lighthouse Point. Um, does anybody have a problem with that? No, anybody? that's what I was going to suggest as well, particularly Michelle, her work in other cities, and David as well. 
to see what other cities do. My understanding, too, in Lighthouse Point has always been, for example, if you're having a party or whatever, that you're really only supposed to be parking on one side of a street, a residential street. Hmm. And it used to be years ago, the police would try and enforce that if you were having a big group or whatever. I don't see that happening at all now with construction vehicles, et cetera. They're just kind of allowed to park on both sides and block people, and it, it really, we do need to do something. Anybody else have a comment? No, I, I agree with you, Dennis. I think you need to bring some of the people that are affected by this, which are the construction trades. Um, it is very difficult on a 22 or 24 foot roadbed to have a delivery truck that's delivering trusses and cranes to fly the trusses and workmen to erect the trusses and not create some sort of problem. Um, so I think probably hearing from those people and what alternatives they've been able to employ to solve those problems would be helpful. Yeah, I think we have to look at it from everybody's point of view. Yeah. Um, not just the the con construction groups, but also the people who live on the streets. Oh, yeah. yeah because, yeah. I, I mean, I, I can tell you, I know it personally. I know ever, a lot of other streets where some construction companies just literally shut the street down, and they don't care if you want to get on and off. Exactly. And we have a lot of streets that are um, dead-end streets. Mm -hmm. And you only have one way in and one way out. And if they shut the street down, you can't get out. And you can't get in. So I think it's a, it's a good suggestion by the mayor to have us look at this and see if there's something. And if anybody here wants to come and talk about that, it will be at our next meeting. I think you will find out in a minute whether our next meeting will be in January or it will be in February. Um, but uh, at whatever the meeting is, all of you are welcome to come and let us know what you think in relation to um, what we might be able to do in, in keeping our streets open, but also accommodating the construction companies. Uh, so having said that, let's move on to the next issue, and then I will depart. Um, we have our next meeting would be scheduled on January 1st. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure I want to come on that uh, on that day. I'll be here. I'll be, I'll be here. <laughs> I may be alive, but I may not be here. Um, so we have a couple of different alternatives. One, we could try to agree on a different date in January to have the meeting. Or secondly, we could continue the one item that is listed for January to our February meeting and just do it all in February. Uh, my suggestion would be we continue the item that is currently supposed to come in front of us to February. Sherry tells me it's not a time-sensitive issue. Correct. Okay. So that it's not going to matter to the applicant if we do it in January or February. So I would suggest we move to continue that item to our February meeting. What's the date of our February meeting? February 5th. 5th. Would somebody, and what's the case number that we have that uh, would be in January? Well, the case number would be 19-01. Okay. So would somebody like to make a motion to I would, continue? I would, I'd like to make a motion to continue the January meeting due to it falling on New Year's Day, January <laughs> meeting, to the uh, normal February 5th meeting. Uh, and particularly continue case number 19-01. Continue any case that's affected, yes. Would somebody like to second that? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Let's vote, Sherry. Sure. Okay. Fred McLean? Yes. Susan Motley? Yes. Kenton Heideck? Yes. Bill Gallo? Yes. Dennis Smith? Yes. Okay, so the meeting is February 5th, not January 1st, and all of you are welcome to come and talk about that issue as well as any other issue that we have on the agenda. Um, and with that, I will declare a conflict. And Thank you, Dennis. Yep. Thank you, Bill. Did you, um, can I turn in my form? Sure. Oh, I did. Yes, you did. Don't forget to turn in your form. I got it. <laughs> okay, so continuing this meeting, we have case 18-18 and case 18-19. They're both related to the same site, Lighthouse Point Yacht Club. Um, if I believe we could do these together. Correct. Correct. And if, if I could just read the title of the ordinance sure. into the record. 
Uh, it's case number 1819. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Idaho Point, Florida, adopting a small scale amendment to the City's land use plan map to change the designation of approximately 3.4 acre parcel. Generally located at 2701 Northeast 42nd Street, Lighthouse Point, is more particularly described in Exhibit A attached here too, and incorporated herein from commercial recreation to multifamily for the purpose of developing up to 33 townhouses in connection with the redevelopment of a private yacht club recommending that for our county amend its land use plan map to change the designation of the parcel from commercial recreation to irregular 11 dwelling units per acre residential, requesting that the Broward County Planning Council recertify the city's amended map, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Uh, this ordinance is before you for a public hearing tonight. Did everybody get that? Because the last time <laughs> the last time I heard somebody talk like that was my induction physical. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> thank you, David. You're welcome. Um, I would, Stephanie or Michelle, do you want to go first? And sure. I'll like the staff presentation. Yeah, we'll have Michelle make her presentation, and then Stephanie. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming you're making a presentation on behalf of the applicant. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So uh, this is, as indicated, a land use plan amendment, just briefly so that the members of the audience understand that the city has a comprehensive plan, a future land use plan. It's kind of like the guiding map, if you will, and then that's implemented by zoning ordinances. And so this is to amend that future land use map to allow for the development that is requested. And what's requested is a land use plan amendment to modify the future land use designation on a portion of the Lighthouse Point Yacht Club, and it's on a total of 3.16 acres um, from commercial recreation to irregular, what they call irregular dash line 11 units per acre. Um, the whole Yacht Club is 9.47 acres, and again, this is just a proportion of it. So the site is currently developed, as I think everybody knows, and used as the Lighthouse Point Yacht Club. It includes a 33,482 square foot a clubhouse building, a pool, 10 tennis courts, and 78 boat slips. The entire yacht club site currently has a commercial recreation future land use designation and what's known as a B2A or a planned business zoning designation. Um, the property includes approximately 2.73 acres of water of area used for boat docking. And when you do a land use plan amendment, you're allowed to go out to the center line of the rights of way or the waterway. So this is just by way of information here. Um, the applicant intends to redevelop the Yacht Club property to update the existing facilities and include new residential development on the site. To accommodate the proposed development, the site requires a land use plan amendment, <coughs> uh, a rezoning, and site planning. The applicant provided a letter from Broward County saying that platting, it's a, like a formal subdivision of land, would not be necessary. Um, the application currently being considered um, is a land use plan amendment to modify the designation for just a portion of the site. Um, to go from, again, from commercial recreation to this residential at a maximum of 11 units per acre. Um, a future rezoning would be required prior to residential development to ensure that the zoning and the land use are consistent as is necessary. Uh, I will mention something here that the comprehensive plan of the City of Lighthouse Point um, states, quote, that each parcel of land within an area designated in commercial uh, recreation land use uh, category on the City's future land use map must be zoned in a commercial recreation zoning district at which permits one or more of the following uses but no other uses. And it enumerates them and one of those of course is the Yacht Club. Um, effectively the comprehensive plan requires all commercial recreation parcels to have a commercial recreation land use designation and that same zoning designation. However, the city doesn't have an established commercial recreation zoning district. Um, therefore, site plan for the Yacht Club cannot be approved until either the comprehensive plan is amended to address that language or a new zoning category is uh, established to address the issue. So one of the reasons that an applicant goes through the formal process of a land use plan amendment uh, application is to assess the impact of the change on facilities and services. So we get into some technical things here in the staff report, but suffice it to say that the analysis was done looking at potable water, drinking water, sanitary sewer, solid waste, an open space and even with the change to 11 units per acre on this portion of the yacht club, they meet all of these public facilities. They stay within a, we call a level of service um, and doesn't have a negative effect in any way. Um, as required by the land use plan application, the applicant included a traffic impact analysis for the 3.16 acres. The impact uh, analysis required the applicant to assess the 
difference in traffic generation between the maximum potential development on the site and the proposed. So it's kind of an academic effort uh, that the applicant goes through. And the applicant did it correctly, but by looking at it that way, you're not really looking at the fact that you're keeping all of your yacht club traffic, but then you're adding the traffic for 33 additional uh, units. So the impact of that, um, the proposed development generates 249 average daily trips, which includes 17 in the AM peak hour, that's from 7 to 9, and 23 in the PM peak hour. Um, and again, this just demonstrates the academic difference between the maximum potential on the southern 3.16 acres. Um, so, okay. But, uh, uh, um, in addition, the city staff requested uh, that Northeast 27th Terrace from Northeast 39th Street to 42nd Street be included in the traffic analysis, um, and the applicant has not provided that information. So the entire impact of traffic, at least at this time, cannot be fully analyzed. Uh, with regard to the impact on schools, the City of Lighthouse Point does not currently have any public school facilities. You know, students are therefore uh, driven or bused to nearby schools. Uh, based on an average student generation rate is provided uh, by the Broward County Land Development Code, the amendment would generate approximately 10 new students, um, which, from my general knowledge, the schools on the east side of Broward County are generally under-enrolled anyway, so it should not have any negative impact. So the comprehensive plan, this guide to the future that you have here, contains goals, objectives, and policies that are adopted to guide the future of the city of Lighthouse Point. Um, Based on the site location and existing conditions, the proposed amendment does not comply with the following comprehensive plan goals, objectives, and policies. Goal 1.0 states, to maintain a low-density, residentially-oriented suburban community characterized by land uses, which reflect a balancing of local population, population needs and minimal disruption, disruption to natural systems. Uh, we find that it does not comply with objective 1.2, which is the objective is to maintain the residential orientation of the city's existing residential areas with particular emphasis on preserving family areas. It does not comport with policy 1.2.2 um, that says in future land use plan amendment and development proposals continue to provide for orderly segregation and transition of varying, orderly transition of varying residential land use densities. And we find that it does not comply with policy 1.4.4 that policy states that in future land use plan amendment and development proposals maintain the integrity and low density character of the city's current residentially zoned areas to the maximum extent feasible. Um, the subject site is tucked away in a single story, single family detached residential neighborhood and is surrounded by water on three sides. The uh, yacht club currently is set back to the rear of the site and is buffered from adjacent residential uses by the tennis court and boat docking areas. The proposed amendment would replace the open tennis court areas with multifamily development, bringing the face of the site's development to the front of the site and reducing the site's physical and visual buffer. Uh, furthermore, in addition to reduced visual buffering, the applicant proposes a density that is more than two to three times the surrounding maximum permitted density. Adjacent neighborhoods to the east and west have a maximum density of three units per acre, and residential land to the south has a maximum density of five units per acre. The applicant proposes a density of 11 units per acre. And in looking at the future land use map, uh, we see that generally pockets of high density uh, within the city are adjacent to other high density residential or commercial areas. So the subject site, if this proposed density of 11 units per acre doesn't really fit into these contexts and it's not proximate or close to any of these other areas. Based on the foregoing analysis, the planning staff recommends denial of the proposed land use plan amendment planning staff also notes an inconsistency between the application and the sketch and legal. Um, should the applicant amend the request, the inconsistency should be addressed. And it's a, it's a minor difference in the acreage. The, the acreage used for the application was the lower acreage and the lesser number of units. I should point that out. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Michelle. Um, any questions of Michelle? Kenton? Susan? No. All right, um, I'd like to let the applicant make a presentation. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be here. My name is Stephanie Tuthaker. I am an attorney with Trip Scott. I'm here on behalf of Lighthouse Point Yacht Club Investments. I know this is obviously not the first time that we have appeared before you in a couple of different contexts, and I, I want to just state that, um, that we 
as you know, when we originally submitted our, our uh, land use plan application, we submitted a conceptual site plan. And we found ourselves in the situation where we spent a lot of time talking about um, details on a site plan that were really truly at that point meant to be conceptual. And we, in fact, still only have um, a conceptual site plan. We're further along um, on the site plan, but we understand that the site plan itself has some issues. Um, we have zoning issues. That we have not submitted a site plan application. The site plan is not pending before you, and we are not here to discuss the site plan. And I just wanted to put that out on the record because, um, because as, as we have found ourselves in some of the, the they've been joint meetings and in, in private meetings and, and whatnot, we end up talking about things like, like parking and the number of, of units, um, the length of the townhomes. Those are all things that we acknowledge and that we acknowledge that we have to work on. And we are continuing to work on those issues and we, we very much look forward to continuing to have those discussions with the city planners and with the city staff and, and ultimately with these boards when we're ready to take those forward. But we have not even to this point submitted a site plan application. So there is nothing site plan related that is pending before you this evening. Um, we have also not submitted a rezoning. As Michelle uh, pointed out in her staff report, the, the existing land use on the property is commercial recreation. Commercial recreation permits a yacht club um, and it permits some other commercial recreation type uses. And then the zoning that is currently on the, um, on the on the property today is B2A, which by your own documents is inconsistent with the land use that is on the property. And B2A actually does permit a wide range of, of uses, including you know, commercial uses, hotels, and things of that sort. But we also acknowledge that while the B2A you know, would, would allow those things, the ultimate land use, which is the underlying um, uh, designation on the property, does not um, does not allow those things. So there's some inconsistencies that at the most basic level we, we know need to be cleaned up. Um, the, the rezoning, um, at some point we, we will come to you on a rezoning and a site plan, but, but today we also acknowledge that the, there's not a zoning category in your code that actually specifically fits what it is we're trying to do. And I think we've had a discussion before this board specifically where we've acknowledged, look, you know, Yacht Club is not a common use. And a lot of these times the Yacht Clubs were, were established um, in multiple cities. We've, and I, I mentioned before, and I'll, I'll mention again, I actually represent three different Yacht Clubs, and they all have the same issue. And that is that the club actually existed before the codes, and the codes were kind of prepared after the clubs, and so as a result, you kind of find yourself in the situation where you've got a little bit of a round peg trying to fit into a, or a square peg rather, into a, into a round hole, and we, we certainly find ourselves here. And so, um, so at the last um, joint meeting that we had with the City Commission and the Planning and Zoning Board, we had a very healthy discussion. Again, we're spending, you know, a lot of time um, talking about site plan issues, and, and again, we acknowledge that we have a lot of a long way to go on those, um, but it was um, it was clear to us, or we, at least we felt it was clear to us, that that at that joint meeting it was decided that we should we should probably just try to move this ball forward while we acknowledge that we have all these other things that we need to do, but to at least start the process. And um, and I want to make it also very clear, and I will get to my, my PowerPoint quite shortly here. I want to make it very clear that 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 a vote to move a land use plan amendment forward does not in any way entitle us to a number of units. That is done through a site plan. The zoning also has to fit what we ultimately want to do. And as I said, we acknowledge that there's not a zoning category that exactly fits this right now. So there's a lot of work that has to be done. But we, we are asking you as a board to allow us to at least move this process forward so that we, we have a framework with which we can start to have those discussions. And I, I recognize that, um, that your staff has, um, is not supportive of the application, and we don't usually like, we, we, me personally, um, I've been practicing in this area not as long as some people, but for a very long time, and I don't usually like to take a project forward that doesn't have staff support. It's not typically the way we like to do things. We usually like to try to find some common ground. Um, unfortunately, I, I think we, we are at a point where we, 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 we acknowledge Terry, Jessica, the entire team, acknowledge that we have site plan issues that we need to work on. We commit to working on those, but we are asking you to allow us to move this process forward so that we can work on those details. Um, so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and go through 
uh, the application, which again, you know, as Michelle very aptly stated, is, is just the land use plan, and this is just the first step in the process. So that's the project team. Of course, you all know Terry Patterson and Jessica Easterling. Um, this is the, the property. Uh, we are, of course, surrounded by single-family residential. We know that, but we are also an existing yacht club that has been there for a very long time. And, uh, and have a lot of members. I think we have a lot of members here that are, are excited to see something happen. And we kept hearing that. We're excited to see something happen. And of course, the devil is always in the details. Um, and we are, as I said, we are just trying to kind of move this ball forward so we can get to those details. The current land use designation, as I said, is commercial recreation. Doesn't permit a whole lot of things. Yacht Club happens to be one of them. The proposed amendment area, as Michelle also said, when we originally submitted our application and we did all of our, our analyses, we did it on an area that is 3.4 acres. That is considered a small-scale land use plan amendment. Um, we, we have continued to tweak that, that number, and we've, we've actually got the area down to 3.16. And, um, and of course, the analyses were done at a higher, um, a higher acreage, so the analyses need to be tweaked, but they'll be tweaked down. Um, the land use designation, as you can see here, this is the area that we would like to, on the right-hand side, we've, we've left that area where the Yacht Club is, is commercial recreation. So if there's any concern that somehow we could sneak some, some housing into those areas, I think we've all made it very clear that we understand that, that residential is not permitted in commercial recreation, not a whole lot is other than a yacht club. So we, we ultimately made the decision that the best thing to do was to leave that land use as it stands today because that is the use that I think everybody wants to see. And we've limited the area that we want to amend to allow a residential component to the area that you see on the left-hand side, which is just the outline where we think that's the appropriate place to put some type of residential uh, development. And, and um, um, and the, the categories that are in the county land use plan are a little bit higher. They allow up to 16 units to the acre. And so what we've done is we've self-restricted down to a smaller number, and that's why it's called a dashed line. I know, I know many people understand this um, that I'm talking to, so I, uh, so I, I just want to make it clear you know, for the people in the audience that we are trying to restrict this as much as we possibly can. And by using that dashed line, that's what we're proposing to do. Um, the timeline, I thought that was an important um, discussion because we have been doing this for a very long time and there's a lot of information out there. This is our first real vote. We've had a lot of public meetings. Nothing has gone to a vote and as I said prior, nothing is pending before the city at this time other than this first first vote in the land use plan amendment. So we had the original uh, LUPA was, was submitted. There was an informal DRC which ended up being only on the site plan, on the conceptual site plan and not on the LUPA itself. Um, we submitted a revised LUPA based on some of those comments that we got. We've had meetings um, with, um, with the, the elected officials that obviously represent the community, and so we're, we're spending a lot of time listening also. Um, we had a DRC meeting on the, on the site plan and the LUPA, but again, it really ended up just being about the site plan, not so much the, the LUPA. Um, and then, of course, we had joint workshops. We had one on August 28th, and we had um, another DRC meeting. We had another workshop. Of course, I know you were all there. Um, and that was where we sort of we, we got the message, and I, I don't want to put any words in your mouth, but it, it, it appeared clear to us that it was time to just move the ball forward and, and try to get some resolution on some of, these, some of these issues. And, of course, we're here this evening. So a land use plan amendment, as, as you all know, um, it, it comes to planning and zoning board, then it goes to city commission. The city commission has to adopt it on first reading. Um, none of this, again, none of this allows you to build anything. It just sets the framework for what you might be able to do in the future once you have all those other changes, including the rezoning and the, um, and the site plan. Um, it goes to the Planning Council, it goes to the Board of County Commissioners, it comes back to the city, and it's got a long time. That takes a very, very long time to do that. Again, rezoning not submitted, site plan not submitted. Those are all things that we are still uh, working on and hopefully working with the city on those things. Um, it is a small-scale development, uh, as, I, as I already described, because it is, uh, it is under the required acreage that allows us to travel um, at a different time. You can basically submit it at any time. It doesn't have to be part of the, part of the, um, the set process because it's a, considered a small scale. You can submit it and you can move forward um, at that time. Um, there was a little bit of confusion because we had asked for an acreage determination 
uh, from the planning council just of the of the, of the site itself, and um, and we did get confirmation back from the planning council that this is considered a small scale because the portion of the land that we're trying to change is limited to 3.16. So um, as we said, the proposed uh, 11 dwelling units to the acre would permit a maximum of it says 33 in here it says 34 in there. I think I believe it's 33. So I apologize. Um, for that, but um, but it is 33 is the number. We're not looking for 24. And um, again, subject to site plan review, which is not pending. We did do a full public facilities analysis as Michelle went through, potable water, sanitary sewer, solid waste drainage, open space, traffic circulation, mass transit, and schools. We found um, all those reports came back that we do not have, we do not have a negative impact. The, the, um, the, these are just sort of, I don't need to read that to you, essentially saying that they don't have, a, have an impact. Um, traffic is, as Michelle also very um, ably described, is a little bit confusing. Um, we, we are uh, in the process of doing the amended traffic report that we've been asked to do. We, we had started um, very, very early on in the process. We, we had looked at, at the site knowing that we wanted to come in with some changes to allow residential. And we asked our traffic consultant to go out on one of the busiest weekends to tell us what is our existing use. And so the original traffic report that we did, we, we did that because we also wanted to know because we've heard that there are some certain, you know, parties that are held at the Yacht Club and whatnot. And, and we wanted to know, you know, what is, our, what is our worst case scenario now? What do we really need to be dealing with when we get to the site plan stage? So that early traffic analysis, we acknowledge that we, we, we can do more. We've gotten direction from the city and we are in the process of doing those things, and I know um, our traffic engineer is also here and can, can talk about that a little bit more. <laughs> I'm going to let you talk. I'm going to let you talk at the end to talk about the traffic because I think it's, it's an important um, point. Uh, same public facilities analysis relates to schools, and um, that was already discussed, hurricane evacuation. Um, we believe that we do comply with the comprehensive plan. Um, the goal is to maintain low density, residentially oriented suburban community characterized by land uses. Um, we do believe that this offers a transitional, um, in terms of the, the low density, it's a townhome community. This is not a, this is not a tower with, you know, with hundreds of apartments in it. It's 33 townhomes and it's adjacent to what's essentially existing as a commercial use, which is a yacht club in the middle of a neighborhood. We want to be good neighbors. We very much um, want to be able to do something that is compatible with the neighborhood, but we do believe that we are compatible. And again, some of those details still, you know, need to be worked out about what the site plan ultimately ultimately looks like. But we do believe that offering a housing solution that is a townhome community is something that is compatible with our adjacent neighbors. And in fact, the height and scale of those townhomes is very similar to uh, the homes here. Are very, they're very large. They're very beautiful homes. They're very big. And these townhomes, you know, when you when you look at them, if you don't look at them as individual units, but you look at them as a as a building, you know, we, we think that they are compatible. And again, we are not here on the site plan this evening, but those are all things that we continue to want to have discussions with the, uh, with the city about. Um, objective 1.2: Maintain the residential orientation of city's exist, existing residential uses with particular emphasis. Um, again, we are proposing a residential land use that maintains the residential orientation of the immediately surrounding single-family residential area. And you know, let's 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 have a you know a little bit of a, a moment of, of honesty. If we were trying to put a yacht club here today, this would never fly. <laughs> if we tried to put a yacht club in the middle of a of a residential community, I don't think you know today that's something that you know, would probably really go all that well. But it is existing and it is somewhat, you know, a, a little bit of a commercial use. And so having a little bit of a buffer of an alternate type of housing community for a, you know, for, for a townhome community, we think actually does create a nice buffer to the, to the residential neighborhood that's adjacent, um, adjacent to us today. Um, in future land use plan amendment and development proposal, continue to provide for the orderly segregation, segregation and transition of varying residential. And I, I really, um, same, it's the same policy, but I believe we, we do address that. And, um, and that is uh, the end of the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I don't know, Carl, I know, did you want to talk, spend just a minute on the traffic? Because I do think that's an important point um, because we did, we did do that analysis and it is a little bit confusing. We've heard a lot about um, that we don't have, you know, less of an impact. 
So I would, I would ask you to please. Absolutely. I'd like to move back to my somewhat confusing slide, if I can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Paul, can you introduce yourself? Please? Yes, I would be glad to. Well, Stephanie gets me back to the slide. Carl Peterson, uh, and uh, my address is 8400 North University Drive in Tamarack. Uh, Trap engineer, registered here in the state of Florida, and uh, working on the project for the past roughly year now. Um, I'm, I'm happy to actually have the opportunity to, to speak to you this evening uh, to talk a little bit about this information here because I realize at first glance here um, it's a little bit confusing. Um, if I explain this to my wife, who actually grew up here in White House Point, that we're going to redo the yacht club and we're going to add a residential component and the track is going to go down. She would look at me like, you're crazy. That doesn't make sense. And I understand that. If I lived here, I would have the same question, the same concern. So uh, it, Michelle did a great job of explaining where we are in this process. This is uh, actually a land use plan amendment phase of this project. Um, Stephanie has uh, fairly clearly reiterated that we're not in the site planning uh, process at this point. And that's where we will really get into the details of a traffic analysis to look at what the actual impacts are on the local roadways as well as the surrounding roadway network. Carl, uh, yes, sir. Before you go ahead, mm -hmm. were you sworn in? Yes, I was. Okay, good. Thank you. And my last name is Peterson, P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N. I know Mr. Smith asked that we spell our last names. I'm sorry, I forgot to do that. No relation to... Yeah, I was going to ask you, was C, C. Carl or K. Carl? K. K. Carl, thank you. K. Carl. And no relation to Patterson, to my knowledge. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Sure. One letter of difference, but no relation. Um, so what this is, is as um, I think, Michelle, you, you explained it as an academic exercise. It is. And the way I usually refer to these land use plan amendments over the 30-some years that I've been doing them is it's a theoretical exercise. It doesn't reflect um, uh, necessarily reality. It reflects a worst case scenario. Counties are in the state of Florida required to maintain a, a land use plan that projects what the land use land uses within their county will look like through the 20, 30 year horizon and whether or not the infrastructure is there to support that land use. And when you're looking at making a change in the land use, uh, whether it be water, sewer, schools, or traffic, um, you're looking at a theoretical case of what's the maximum intensity associated with the current land use designation. So what, if, if you max out everything that you could possibly do under that current land use designation, you then compare that with what the maximum intensity is for the proposed land use that you're seeking. And in this particular case, we're going from a, uh, a commercial recreation designation, which could contain a variety of, of commercial type uses and proposing a residential use. And that's how we end up with this particular scenario here. So again, it's academic, it's theoretical, but it does reflect a reduction if we're looking at the three plus acres in terms of a commercial recreation use, which would, could be a, a YMCA, a gym, what have you, when you're proposing the residential designation of 34 dwelling units, it results in a trip reduction. And so from a land use plan amendment phase, that's a benefit. And now when we go forward to other phases of the project, obviously, we'll be looking at the, the different analysis. But the, the purpose of our meeting here tonight is to talk about the land use plan amendment and moving that forward, hopefully, to the county. And so that's an explanation as to why those numbers are red. And, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have regarding that analysis. So, Stephanie, I guess. Are we dealing with 33 or 34? Are we 33. 3.16 or 3. Point? Because we're getting different numbers on different charts. It's thir it's, so the, the land use plan amendment that we submitted was 3.4. 3 the acreage was 3.4. Um, as a result of some of the site plan issues, we were able to scale that back to 3.16, and the number is 33 units okay. to the acre. Okay. So, 
If I may, so in the in the proposed ordinance, it correctly states the 33 townhousing that's in the title, but in section two, the reference to the acreage would be 3.16 as opposed to yeah. 3.16. Yeah, we've reduced this juncture. At, at this juncture. Right. I'm looking at the chart, it was 34, and the gentleman but, mentioned yeah. there as well. I just want to get my arms around. When we that. originally submitted, we were higher. We've reduced, we've reduced, the, we reduced the numbers Great, uh, thank slightly. You. Yeah. Thank you. So, Stephanie, the dash line consists of 3.16. That's correct. Anyone else? Uh, I just, if I could clarify something, because yeah. there's been some discussion, and accurately so, um, by Stephanie, the, the, the LUPA, the Land Use Plan Amendment application, came in, and we kept focusing on site plan issues, but there was a reason for that, and that is um, I wanted to ensure that the area that was being carved out not only would accommodate the 33 units, but I was also concerned with what that did to the remainder of the site and how it affected it in terms of traffic and circulation. So it became kind of a chicken and egg sort of thing. The, the sketch has been taken out of the application, so we're looking strictly at the density of 11 units per acre and compatibility with the surrounding, immediately surrounding neighborhood. Yep. Questions? Just uh, actually reading the ordinance that's in front of me, it's still, I'm confused on the 3.4 and the 3.16. The, the ordinance was prepared sometime previous to this, and <coughs> based on the information presented, it would just be the pre substitute 3.16 for 3.4. And the rest remains the same. Right. The, the title remains the same, referencing the 33 council mm -hmm. units. It's just the acreage amount is 3.16 as opposed to 3.4. So really, if you just multiply 3.16 times 11, that's mm -hmm. what you, you got to get to. Those three numbers need to be in sync with each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, mm -hmm. Susan? Or, I'm sorry, I can't I'm not going to buy you very quickly. No, go ahead. No, I, I was only question about this when we have the discussion. Yeah, I was going to get through us and then I'll open it up to the public. Yeah. Why 11 units per acre? That gets us to the, the number 33, which was which is the proposal, the site plan proposal well, that that's we... That's the number you would like. That's the number that we would like, but we acknowledge to this board and to everyone that we that a land use plan amendment does not entitle us to that number that that is that will be driven by the ultimate site plan and if that site plan gets approved and we are continuing to work on the site plan we um, we the main issues that we've been hearing relate to parking um, and and some of the orientation of some of the townhomes, those things are still, we're still kind of tinkering around with that. We have a, a ways to go. Um, we have a lot of meetings that we need to have with staff as we continue to work through those issues. But we were hoping to not, even though we have heard from some people they would like to see fewer townhomes, we, what we're what we're asking this board and ultimately the city commission is allow us to travel through the process. We acknowledge that you do not have to approve a site plan or a zoning category or anything else that, that in any way would entitle us to those numbers, but we think we can get there. Um, we are hopeful that we can get there, and if we don't, we don't. But I don't, I would prefer not to limit the land use plan amendment to a lower number without having the time and opportunity to continue to work on the site plan issues. Fred, any questions? Just, just clarify the parking issue. The, the parking is right now based on the worst case scenario of what the property could be used for, not what it is today compared to what it would be. Traffic, you mean? The traffic, I'm sorry, yes. The traffic. Um, I'm going to let Carl, I'm going to let the expert answer that. So let me make sure I understand you're, you're asking the question again about what it could be in the future. On right. The, it's not, the reduction isn't from what it is now. You're right. It's you're from right. what it could possibly be based on the current code. Exactly. You, you did it exactly. It it's code. what it okay. could theoretically be under the current land use designation, right. not zoning, okay. site plan, or anything else. It's a land use designation issue. What's the maximum development potential under that land use designation versus the proposed? Yep. 
it's any other for now. Yep. Um, um, just, uh, Kenton, one more question. Yeah, um, is there other options besides that dash line 11 units per acre? Is there, what are the other, what so, are the other residential zoning options that so it's not, so I want to make this, I was going to try and make something really clear and it's for the audience, I think. I know there's been a lot of technical things thrown at you. This is complex planning. Um, but we're really here only to discuss two things. Should they be allowed residential on that property? And if they are, what's the density? And that decision really based upon what we feel the compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood is relative to our comprehensive plan. Um, so, to answer your question, it ranges from not allowing any residential units to 50 an acre. I mean, really, it's, you know, there are, there are zones that go as high as 50 an acre, and New York did 250 an acre. So, um, or you could have a dash line with much less number correct. of and, units. And if I may add to that, just to explain what this dash line thing is. Yeah. Good. So <laughs> the dash, so there are there are set categories of land uses on the county land use plan. We have set categories, one unit, uh, three units, five, ten, sixteen, I think is what the ranges are. If you if you have a number that's different than those predefined or predetermined categories, then it becomes an irregular dash line area. Right. So if you have an eleven or a thirteen or a six or something like that. That's because it's not a pre-named, pre-designated category. It becomes a regular dash line. And it's my understanding you can, in your application, designate whatever you might want within that dash line. Yes. And, and if I could also expand on that. So when we started the discussions with the Planning Council, when, when, um, when Terry and his team first bought this, we looked at the, um, the potential land use categories. And, and to, to be specific, the residential categories that are available are, you know, two, two units to the acre, three units to the acre, low five residential, which is five units to the acre, and then the, gener the more the multifamily, which is usually what you use for a townhome community if you're doing a land use plan amendment, are 10 units to the acre, 16 units to the acre, 25 units to the acre or 50 units to the acre. So we knew that we, well, when we originally started, we said we would really like to be under that 10 units to the acre. And when we first, and this is what sort of created the confusion about the original land use plan and how we drew that line. And so, so if we, if we increased our land area for the land use plan amendment, we could be under 10 units to the acre, which is a, one of the established categories. But the problem became, when you go back here, and this is probably the best slide to do it, the problem became that we really wanted to leave as much land in the Yacht Club property, commercial recreation property, as possible and limit the land use plan amendment to the residential, as make it as small as possible because everybody loves the club. They want it. I think generally you're going to hear people say, we love the club, we want to see the club get redeveloped. And we felt it was important to leave you know, for, for other, for essentially for yacht club uses, you know, the pools, the tennis courts, the things that belong on the, on the yacht club property. So what we did, even though we, we, we moved that line around a lot as we were working on the land use plan amendment, that's a pretty typical thing you, when you work with planners and whatnot to try to do that, we ultimately settled on it's better to leave more property in with the yacht club, leave it commercial recreation, which is a very limiting land use and create a dashed line that's not 16 units to the acre, but is slightly larger than 10, which is what we needed for the site plan that we acknowledge is not pending and could easily be limited by this board and by the city commission, but that we would hope we would give us the opportunity to continue to work on that. This a land use plan amendment takes a year. Um, so we've got a lot of time to, to work on that, but that's why we went with the dashed line as opposed to one of the established categories. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'd like to open I up. I have one more oh. question, Bill. Okay. Stephanie, in terms of the processing of a small-scale amendment, mm -hmm. which is what you said this is, doesn't it take less than a year? Um, 
A year all in. So a year when we, we started the discussions, we hired the, yeah, so, so for the actual process, you're correct, it does not take a year okay. to go through go through the, the public hearing process. Yeah, I, would, closer to, I would estimate more six months. It's closer to six months. Six months. Yeah. A year, I should have been clear, a year includes the time it takes the consultants and you know, yeah, moving I, the line I, around. I'm just talking about the process. The actual itself. process, you're absolutely correct, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a good presentation. Um, I'd like to open up the public portion of the meeting, and this allows anyone from the public who'd like to speak, ask a question of the, anyone that's presented. Come forward. If you haven't been sworn in when you come up, please state your name, address, and uh, state that you haven't been sworn in, and we'll swear you in. Is there a time yes, sir. Come forward. Up. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Michael Holmes, uh, 2242 Northeast 26th Street, Lighthouse Point. Um, by the way, congratulations on the bond issue. That is absolutely great. Okay, uh, got a lot of good things going on here, along with all the facilities y'all got. Okay, we're looking to do something else for this community. Okay, that happens to be this club. Okay, as we continue to try and grow our community, okay, this club needs an uplift. Okay, needs a facelift. How could we do that, okay, if I as a member was trying to carry on the debt associated with that thing? And, and we couldn't. So Terry's come in and put together a program to fund this to help us achieve some of the goals that we've had in this city about making it one of the best cities in the U.S., okay? And this way, he's going to be able to carry a little bit of a debt load on here, and we get this great club. Okay, so along with the facilities you're going to be renovating with your bond issue, okay, the funds associated with the taxes will help y'all fund some of these new staff members that you can have in here as y'all grow. It is a perfect situation. Why didn't we have to add one more policeman to help with things? There's going to be enough. There's going to be a tax impact from this to help y'all out. Okay, the club itself is going to bring energy to this community. Okay, That thing is down, it's, it's old, it needs to be brought up. Okay, As y'all are trying, was quoted, trying to make this one of the best cities in the U.S., Okay, in addition to what y'all are doing, the one man doing the most outside of this great chamber we have is this gentleman right here. He almost single-handedly is going to help change and, and bring our city up. You know, I believe this city could be like in the, the top 50 places to live in the U.S. It's that cool. It's that neat. It is that unique. But we need a little bit of an upgrade. I meant to tell you, thank you for um, not... Give me a ticket last time when I had to park on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> we don't give tickets. <laughs> and because I got here a tad bit late, I'm back out on the grass again. <laughs> but that brings me to a thought. Can you imagine if y'all couldn't have built this building right here completely because of one or two times every two months? The traffic load kicked up higher than it normally would be. After our last meeting, and I'm trying to get my hands on some of the things that's being said, I decided to go over to the marina. So I drive over to the marina, not the yacht, but the marina. Mm -hmm. And I drive by the three-story townhomes that don't even focus in my mind anymore as three stories. They're just part of the community. I drive by it, they're just there. The only reason I was there was trying to get a handle on the parking issues I thought I heard. And so I'm looking at that marina. I'm glancing at those three-story townhomes. I'm looking at the restaurant, the people coming out of that restaurant. And I wonder if they even have enough parking that we already have at the club. Okay. And the, the only thing I ask y'all is, this is my club, and this is a lot of their clubs. Please don't hold us 
accountable to a different standard that's been placed in the past. Okay. I believe y'all really want this. I really do. I believe y'all are in favor of this. Okay. As a resident of Lighthouse Point, as a member of that club, I hope that you guys support this project because it is very, I believe, important to the city to achieve some of the long-term goals you have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is J.L. Goldberg. I live at 2500 Northeast 32nd Court in Lighthouse Point. I'm also a member of the club. I've been a member of the club for 21 years. Long time. Long time. And would I like to see the club improve? Yes. I would like to see the club improve. But I think with improvements, you have to look at their cost. You have to look and see what are you giving up and what are you getting. I guess that's how we do everything. I heard a reference made to something square going through a round hole. I'm going to give you another reference. I'm going to give you a reference of a size 10 or 11 foot trying to squeeze into a size 5 shoe. <laughs> doesn't work. doesn't work. Do we need an improvement of the club? It's great. I would love to see an improvement of the club. I've seen some improvements there already. But the density that's being requested is impossible for that site. I say that, not just as a resident, but as a lawyer who represented many, many developers over a period of over 40 years of practice. Yeah, they ask for a lot, and hopefully they get something, but they don't usually get what they're asking for. That's normal. There is no way that that property can sustain 33 townhouses or 30 townhouses. The most townhouses that I could envision on that property, if you were being very liberal, would be something in the neighborhood of maybe 20 to 22 townhouses because the property just, you can't squeeze the size 11 into a five chew. It just doesn't work. I know what I'm saying is upsetting to some people here in this room, but you know, that's the way it goes. You have a terrific traffic problem. And I heard reference made and unless I didn't understand it, that with the present zoning of the property, uh, things could be theoretically built on the property to generate more, more traffic than would be generated by this lot of townhouses. Well, that may be theoretically true, but we all know that that's not likely. Indeed, it probably is impossible. Then I've heard it said that the profits from these townhouses are going to go towards the building or rebuilding of our yacht club. Well, that's that's great. I think that's wonderful. Except you got one problem, and that problem is that if you get to the density that should go on this property, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 24 townhouses. I 
based on my experience, there may not be enough money to make the club what has been represented that it's going to look like. I would like to think it does, but maybe the developer, maybe Terry has deeper pockets than we all think to bring that about. That would be wonderful. It would be wonderful, but we cannot sacrifice our community to make this property what they want it to be, because we would be sacrificing our community. Our traffic would be abominable. The parking problems on that property would be unbelievable. And I would only urge one other thing of you, regardless of what you ultimately do. If there is some construction of townhouses on the property, which I presume that maybe there will be, I hope, a smaller number, that there be a performance bond that ensures that the Yacht Club building will be built. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to cut up? Here we go. Thank you. Good evening. Julie Wheeler. I live at 2240 Northeast 46th Street. Could I hear your name again? Julie Wheeler. Thank you. Last time I was here, my daughter was being given the key to the city for her fundraising efforts in Haiti, building homes and a school in Haiti. So past board member of the Chamber of Commerce of Lighthouse Point and been a resident of Lighthouse Point for almost 25 years now. My husband and I own three homes here. Um, I don't know the folks that bought the Lighthouse Point uh, Yacht Club, but when I heard that somebody had bought it, I was like, yes, because I got married there. Uh, my husband's a boat captain, so we spend a lot of time uh, with our boat at the marina there. And um, I don't know about all the traffic and all these, but it sounds to me like the people are doing their due diligence, and and I just think that it's a great idea. I think that townhomes are going to bring taxes. People are going to be paying property taxes. I think it's going to increase our property values. And I understand the people that live near the Yacht Club, I understand how they feel because I lived on 51st Street while they uh, redid the 49th Street Bridge and they rerouted um, all of the traffic down my very quiet street. So if there's anyone here that lives on those streets that are worried about all of the traffic and everything, I totally understand that because we went through it and I felt that pain myself of living on a quiet street and then all of a sudden having a lot of construction traffic. But you know what? When it was all said and done, the bridge is beautiful and the traffic was really not that much of an inconvenience. So I'm a resident and, and I would hope that you guys would look at, at how other residents feel and I think it's a great idea for us to redevelop this area. And the 11 versus the 10 units per acre, if I'm understanding this correctly, that we, in Broward County there's already some sort of um, approval for 10 units per acre. Am I understanding that? Is, no, no. no. There's no residential approved on the property right now. But in Broward County, the, the rules and, and it, why is 11 versus 10 such a big difference You'll have then? You ask the applicant. Okay. okay. <laughs> I just would hope that you guys could would take into consideration. I think that um, it will improve Lighthouse Point. We've, with the chamber, we've done the taste of Lighthouse Point now. Uh, another group has taken it over, but we've had a lot of a lot of great, great um, organizations do great things through the Yacht Club, and I think that by improving the Yacht Club and adding some residential uh, space to the 
to that property will just make our, our city a better place and make more money for our city and increase, you know, uh, how our city is viewed by others. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Barbara Jean Militello, M I L I T E L L O, 41. You can pull that microphone yeah, down it'll, a little. It'll bend. Where, where are you? Just pull the top of yeah, it. Yeah, it bends. Yeah, it bends. Okay. There you go. There you go. 4101 Northeast 27th Terrace, gateway to the Yacht Club, three houses from the Yacht Club. If you want a traffic report, I can give you one. Um, I've lived in my home for 23 years. I work out of my home, and so therefore I'm there all day long to see the traffic. Uh, I am a member of the Yacht Club, and first I want to tell Terry that I enjoy the Yacht Club a whole lot more than I used to. I think he's done a lot of positive things. I think he's brought us together as a group. I, it's very family-oriented now, so I do enjoy that. However, the traffic has been such a problem. The speeding is a horrendous problem. I'm fearful that a child's going to get hurt. The neighborhood has changed immensely since I bought my home. There were no kids 23 years ago. There's lots of kids now. I watch them skateboarding and riding their bikes. Um, so we are subject to not only member traffic, food delivery traffic, employee traffic, marina worker traffic, waste management traffic. We have tons of traffic now. So someone has to tell me 33 units, minimum of two vehicles per household, cleaning staffs, food deliveries, guests. I, 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 I can't imagine how that's not going to affect our quality of life in our community because it's horrible now and it's, this is just going to exacerbate the problem. Other than that, I love the club. The club does need to be improved, but I just don't know how we're going to withstand all the additional traffic problems and the speeding. And speeding is horrible. I think it would be very helpful if we could have a couple of speed bumps on 27th Terrace. I've asked the city several times. We have them going to the Naughty Dog. We have them going on the street going to Cap's Place, even though you can't drive to Cap's Place. The speed bumps are all through the uh, cut through that goes to Deerfield Beach. They're now installing speed bumps all over the side streets of Deerfield Beach, but we have none on the major thoroughfare that goes from 39th Street to the Yacht Club. People turn off 39th Street, and for some reason they think they have to drive 50 miles an hour to get to the Yacht Club, and it's horrible. I, not too long ago, was out watering plants. It was a Monday, and I do believe waste management picks up the trash on Mondays at the Yacht Club. The waste management truck went down I, the street. It had to be going 50 miles an hour. I heard them pick up the trash. I heard the truck coming back out of the driveway. I went and stood in the middle of the street. And they stopped and they said, what's the problem? I said, you do realize this is a residential community with families and children, and you're driving 50 miles an hour in a 25 mile per hour speed zone. And they just shook their head like I was, you know, a crazy lady and put their windows up and took off. So I am very concerned with the problem. I would be crazy if I wasn't concerned with the problem because I live there and I want to live there for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Victor Brizzoni, B R U Z Z O N E. I live at 44 11 Northeast 23rd Avenue, just down the Grand Canal. Thank you for this moment to speak and allow me to voice my, uh, myself as a citizen of this community. Ms. Patterson has provided the board with many details, some of which I've had time to review. While the renderings are very nice, allow me to speak about the numbers which are what truly affect me. And as a citizen, these 33 townhouses add revenue to the community. It's estimated that over a million dollars will be paid in taxes, of which $200,000 will be to Lighthouse Point directly. Of this, there should be no extra costs to Lighthouse Point. So all this goes towards the current expenditures, thereby keeping my taxes the same, or at the best, reducing them a bit. I, for one, would be willing to forego that reduction to pay down the bond a little bit 
and make room for additional improvements. With Lighthouse Point Yacht Club becoming more and more involved with the community, and by adding these valuable homes, Mr. Patterson indirectly increases the, the demand to live here. The sales value maintains the status of the community, and the sales value maintains, and the desire drives the property value. He is, in essence, increasing my property value, and for this I thank him. Additionally, this increase in value should not affect my taxes due to the additional income that the 33 units would generate. I've seen some of the developments that went up. They are by far not as appealing as what Mr. Patterson envisions or proposes. And unlike some other developments which require cars to be parked on the streets, this has no impact with cars parked and hindering the ways. Sorry about the speed. I do not know how the current zoning allows this, but it is a reality. Mr. Patterson is taking the profits of the construction of these townhouses to build a new and modern club, of which he will remain the owner. As a member, this is a great savings to me. Yes, I'm a member of the club. As I don't have to make any additional contributions to remain a member in what is quickly becoming a beacon in this community, I'm proud to be a part of the many events the club participates in, around town or hosted at the club. In building this new facility, Lighthouse Point will rid itself of what some consider to be an eyesore, old, or simply in dire need of a new facade. Lighthouse Point will boast a new and modern club with a membership that complements it, attracting more of the same. I've been a proud member of this community for over 10 years, a member of the club for five, but only a proud member for a little over one year after Mr. Patterson took over. I hope, it, I hope to be an even prouder member of both and trust you will both push this forward. In essence, Mr. Cohen has given a facelift to a facility that could use it. Mr. Patterson's proposing the same thing. And from what I'm understanding, this is not a site plan. This is just a meeting decide whether to push it forward. I hope the gentlemen and ladies do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. I see a lot of bodies out there. I mean, no one else wants to talk? One more. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leo Benz, 3000 Northeast 31st Avenue, PDNCC. The desire of all the members of the public who spoke at the October 22nd workshop was, we want the Yacht Club. In addition, all the members of the Commission supported that desire. The Commission also wished to assure the future owners of these townhouses would have access to 42nd Street and to the promised amenities. How can this board assist the commission in accomplishing that desire? You are aware that the city land use plan controls over zoning and any other methods of land use. The existing designated land use for this property is commercial recreation which prohibits residential use of any kind, which you've also heard before. Being blunt and strict, the commission could take no action whatsoever in regard to this property, and no townhouses or other res residential property could be built. The existing yacht club could continue, or some other commercial recreation use could take place. If you approve this case number 18, 18 and 1819 as proposed, then the major portion of this property will become multifamily, and this board and the commission will lose basic control over this property. In the attached, I have circled and numbered where I'm talking about the ordinances proposed. Number one is dashed lines, small scale, up to, in conjunction with, an irregular residential all terms 
that need to be further defined so that the commission and the public here tonight would understand what we're talking about. The commission has not approved 33 townhouses. Remember, this developer first suggest, suggested plan was for 10 or 11 single family homes so that he knows his property rights are seriously restricted or limited. In regard to the new yacht club, roadways, and the amenities, this developer has suggested that he build the first group of five townhouses. Thereafter, on obtaining permits to build the next group of five townhouses, he would simultaneously obtain building permits and proceed timely with the construction of the new yacht club and the amenities. Of most importance to the city commission will call for a performance bond to assure the construction and the, and the timing schedule for these improvements. This developer has also proposed a six foot concrete promenade dock around the entire property. With commercial recreation land use on that, on that dock so that the yacht club could rent these docks. The income from these docks is important to, to the yacht club. The city should not give away its bargaining position until all of the above is reduced to a contract. Yes, this developer has been concerned about the loss of time. However, he has been in this process since, since last July, and nothing new about much of the above has been formally presented to the board. And they mentioned small-scale development or what have you. But this is the largest scale development that this board or the city commission has probably seen in 15 years, or 50 years, I mean to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Matt Donahue, 2820 Northeast 39th Court. Um, we, I hope and I, I think that, that the, uh, the board has done a very good job to try to bring people's expectations back down to what we're talking about tonight. And I, I, I hear that we, we kind of go back a little bit of a boomerang back to um, issues that really aren't involved in, in what we're trying to do tonight, which was the land use. Um, I, I feel like this is a good transition. I live in that area around the club. I have kids that are on their skateboards and their bikes that ride down to the club because we're members. So I, I understand what your concerns are because it's my boys riding down there. So I, of course, want them to be safe. Um, but I also know that when I bought my property that that club was there. Um, realistically, and I've said this in previous meetings, Mr. Patterson <coughs> bought that club and given away memberships to everybody in the city, charged zero for initiation, everybody were to join, and you'd have thousands of people going down there. The restrictions or the traffic, you'd still have it, and that's still there. Uh, the, the, these extra townhomes are part of members, so they're memberships that go into it, and I understand those members would have parties or those residents would have parties and other people would come. That happens on every street. Uh, as we talked about earlier, and I think, Mrs. Motley, you brought up, it's crazy when you drive down a street and somebody has a party and people are parking on both sides of the road. So we're addressing it in a large scale. It's not just separate out to the yacht club. So those are issues that the city deals with all the time. I think it's a good transition. And I understand that the Lighthouse Point and 39th project that is moving forward is in a different phase because it's a little bit of commercial, a little bit of, of multifamily moving down into single family and residential. I understand that. But I would be interested to find out the size of the property that that, that development is going on from a, from a square footage size. Is it an acre? I think the, the ability for them to build 12 units, I think, is what the, is what the amendment's going to be. Uh, I don't know. Is that an acre? I don't know if anybody, do you guys know, is that an acre piece of property over there? Lighthouse. Are you talking about the other development? Lighthouse and 39th Drive, that development is at an acre. So, so there was no land use plan amendment. I understand that, but is that an acre piece of property, or is that, that less than an acre? So, I don't remember. It's less than an acre? 
It's one acre and it's zoned RM16. There's I understand. No amendment. No, 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 I understand that, but I'm just saying that the, 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 the heightened term is density, and it's a lot of buildings. The one gentleman brought up, it's a lot of buildings on one piece of property. Um, trying to fit a size 11, I think you said, into a size 5, that's one acre and there's 12 units on there. So that's in excess of what Mr. Patterson is looking at on a per acre. I understand it's, it didn't get any land use amendment, but if we're talking about apples to apples, we have a little bit over an acre with 12 units. Mr. Patterson's asking for an acre with 11 units. It was, it was seen to be in the best interest of the city to put that development in because it was an eyesore with grass and we wanted to see it developed. And I was at the commission meeting when it got pushed through and, and everybody was very happy that it went through, which I'm happy, it's great, it's gonna look nice. But if, we're, if we are comparing and trying to use that terminology of density and everybody wants to, to form in the conversation that we're having, the issue being the density. Density would become an issue in that res in that situation too. That's a major thoroughfare within the city. Construction is gonna be, there's gonna be in and out of the city, there's gonna be in and out of that complex. So not to say that I'm against that, but if we're gonna, if we're gonna talk about those things, I would just think that the, the other residents and the other people here should know that other projects do go on within the city that have a larger volume per acre than what Mr. Patterson's looking for. And again, all we're talking about is this land use for the 3.1 acres. We're not talking about what it's gonna look like. We're not talking about somebody speeding down the street, which Mr. Patterson can't really affect that, what the drivers are. Um, and that's just my concerns, and I just wanted to bring those up. So I just thought that other people should kind of keep those things in mind when we, when we think about how, if he's trying to cram something into such a small space. Thank you. Yes, For the benefit of the folks in the audience, I just want to comment um, because you're, it's really not a good comparison, what you just did. So the, so that person that owns that property has vested property rights, and we as a board cannot take those property rights away from them. Mr. Patterson doesn't have those vested property rights. He's asking for them. There's a very difference. And that applicant came in here to are entitled to 16 units per acre and we worked with them to resolve those problems and they reduced it to 12 units per acre. Mm -hmm. So it's not, because you could say, well, in, in New York, they built 15 units an acre and people get along with it and it's okay. Understand. But that. I just want you to understand, they have those vested property rights. I, no, 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 and I'm not, I'm not disputing I whether or not they- I can't take those rights, whether I like it or not, I cannot take their rights. I, I, no, I'm not, a, I'm, not just, I'm not disputing that. I'm just wanting to make sure that other people within the city understand that there are parcels of land that you have a multi-family home, just is They're all over the county. They're all over the exactly, state. They're exactly, exactly. So country. I'm just disputing, I'm just saying that out. Other people might not understand that. Well, I, yeah. I just want them to understand the reality of the situation. Yes, sir. Yes, good evening. Mike Wilsman, 3911, Northeast 27th Terrace. Um, I'm all for the Yacht Club being rebuilt. I was a member for 20 years. I'm no longer. And I won't be, but um, my concern is the traffic. And Terry, I'm a little bit concerned if your traffic is going to be reduced, that means you're not going to have members coming into your club for your parties and such. So I don't understand Mr. Peterson's thoughts. Maybe I'm like your wife. You need to sit down with me, but uh, you need I don't understand that. You need to keep your comments focused to the board. Thank you. I've never done this before. Um, Actually, I have on the wall situation. Uh, I did come and speak, and I was not for that. But I am for the Yacht Club. So um, I hope he gets it. But I am concerned about the traffic. And I do have individuals that are in this room that I've probably seen go by my house pretty quick that didn't go to the Yacht Club. Um, I've had my neighbors chase people down to the Yacht Club or to their homes in the neighborhood and handle it without the police because of speeding. Oops. I was one of them that went down to the yacht club and chased a lady that was late for her tennis appointment and just asked her politely, as I was a member, not to speed on the street because I do have younger kids at that time. I am concerned. So maybe some, Terry and I spoke, it was some stop signs maybe in between, half the way down, speed bumps. I know the fire department doesn't like them. But something has to be done to control that traffic because there are these Ferraris and Maseratis that are going up and down the road 
that are doing the 50 miles an hour, such as the individuals that she was talking about. Because I walk that street every morning at 7 o'clock in the morning, and I wave to so many people. <laughs> and they're coming from the yacht club, they're coming from the neighborhood, and they are going at a high rate of speed. Hmm. And then there are some that do the speed. If not, I usually yell and tell them to slow down. But again, I do approve of what he's planning to do. I hope he gets it. <clears throat> but again, I'm concerned about the traffic and the speeding of the traffic. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like Barbara Jean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mimi Laser, 2701 North 42nd Street. Yes, I live at the Yacht Club. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I am a resident of Lighthouse Point. I live on my boat at the Yacht Club. Oh. Um, so all of this... You're my idol, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> so all of this affects me more, I would think, than some other residents, because I'm right there on property. I know tonight is only about whether you're going to vote to rezone that so that he can build residential? No zoning. No, no zoning. Okay. This is just the land use. Land use. Okay. So it would give him the, the right to build some kind of uh, other things there other than commercial. Gives him the, right, the right to request the ability. Okay. okay. Residential. Well, that seems pretty easy. Residential. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a density of 11 units an acre. I mean, that seems like a pretty easy request. So we can move on with this. And, and can I go home now? Yeah. And, and not, um, I mean, nothing, it, the, what they look like, how many there are, traffic, all that, that's still being dealt with. And it seems like everybody here's looking at it. They're doing great due diligence. This planning, Michelle and the, and the attorney step, they're brilliant. And they know what they're doing. And I think that they both, um, everybody will come to an agreement. So I will be affected if there are 11, 11, uh, 33 townhouses there. It will take me longer to drive through the property to get to my boat. Okay, what if I had a red light somewhere? If it still might take me longer, so I am. Who knows? Maybe some of these people are snowbirds. Maybe some are downsizing, and they'll only have one car, two cars. And if they live there, they're more apt to throw a party at the club than mess up their own house. You know, <laughs> pay the club to have the party. So that's what I would do. So anyway, I speaking from someone who lives at the club. Um, definitely changes need to happen, but let's just vote and move this thing along and keep it going. Whatever y'all vote tonight, he's, he's not going to go out and build 33 townhouses tomorrow that look like what they look like now. They very well could look very different. You know, it's a, it's an evolving, uh, a fluid project. And I think everybody agrees we want something. Well, let's give a chance to keep rolling and see what we come up with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My name is John Bundy, B U N D Y. I live at 2831 Northeast 33rd Street, Lighthouse Point, Florida. Uh, I just wanted to kind of voice my opinion. I've, I've lived here 31 out of my 38 years of life. I've never been to one of these meetings, but um, I have no vested interest in this project. I don't even know Mr. Patterson, but um, I only have a desire to see things like this come to fruition for our city. Um, you know, back in the day, he was the first guy that spoke, talked about the marina. I used to play football in a dirt-filled, thorn-filled lot, which is now those townhomes, and it's now a beacon of our city. Um, you know, I go fishing all the time, and I pass the yacht club, and it's just such a rundown property compared to what I had envisioned long ago for that property. So, you know, I hope you know you get this done. Um, 
you know, I'm probably going to live here. My friends joke that I'll never leave this city because I have a lot of pride in this city. I already think we're one of the top 50 cities in this country. So <clears throat> I just want to keep seeing it become greater and greater. I think it's going to be, um, I, don't, I don't see a lot of the negatives that are going to come. I, I definitely feel for the traffic um, that it's going to cause the people who live right by the Yacht Club. If it does cause traffic, I'm not sure because I don't live there. But um, the same exact arguments came up when that happened to the marina. I was young, but I remember people started, you know, getting crazy over it, saying traffic's going to be crazy, you know, elements going to come in, all this, you know, hoopla. And then, you know, my mom lives right there, right at the fork, and there, you know, there's not, there was never an increase in traffic. You know, I live by St. Paul's and Frank McDonough. I have the church and the park and speedings awful everywhere. I mean, I have parents of kids that go down my street faster than the kids. That's not their problem. That's, you know, that's something that has to be dealt with in other ways. But I just, you know, I can't think of too many negatives here. I'd love to see this for the employees of the Yacht Club and, and our city. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Evening. I'm uh, Richard Lytle. I live at 3910 Northeast 27 Terrace, the uh, pathway to the club. Uh, last name is spelled L-Y-D-L-E. Uh, first of all, I'm for the, uh, the project. Uh, I am a member of the club. I live on the pathway to the club, uh, so the traffic uh, is, is uh, an issue. Uh, if we could get the Cisco truck to slow down, Everybody would be safer. Uh, it says go out all the trucks, and it's the trucks that say uh, Detroit Diesel on them that are they hurt, and um, that, that's going to be a problem today, tomorrow, and in the future. But I'm a three for I live on the street. I'm a member of the club, and I want to buy one of the condos, <laughs> and, and it's good for the community. I want it. I want to pay big taxes. So, but it, it's a beautiful community. I lived in Palm Beach, and I moved here uh, May 1st of this year. Why would I leave Palm Beach to come here? This is one of the great places in the country to live. My brother lived here until he passed away four years ago. My parents lived down uh, on the intercoastal near here. For me, this is like home ground, and this is a huge improvement to the area. So I certainly approve of you. you vote tonight to take the next step. Uh, I agree with the young lady before. Uh, we have to keep the process going through and sort out the good, the bad, and the ugly and make it a beautiful project for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh -huh. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Chellen Sullivan. Um, I'm a member of uh, the Lighthouse Point Yacht Club. Uh, I'm not a resident of Lighthouse Point, but I am hopefully a future resident of the townhomes. Um, I just want to make sure it's okay for me to speak. My address is uh, 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 1885 Highland Grove uh, Drive, Delray Beach, Florida. I've seen, I've been in Delray for 22 odd years. I've seen Delray grow from a small town to what it is today. It's, uh, town homes are going up, big buildings are going up, it's very busy. But it's still, you know, it, uh, won many awards for best city in America and, and other awards for you know, it's, it's just a booming city. Um, I personally have um, you know, uh, seen myself uh, living in Lighthouse Point uh, in one of the beautiful uh, townhomes that uh, Mr. Patterson's building. I personally know uh, Mr. Patterson's other developments that he has built at Sky 230, which is, again, multi-million dollar townhomes in uh, um, uh, Fort Lauderdale by the sea. Uh, in Fort Lauderdale, the awards that Mr. Patterson has won for his development of these beautiful homes that he creates and builds, 
is spectacular. So he's going to be bringing to Lighthouse Point, if you look at his track record, something spectacular, something beautiful. Not only to the townhomes, which I know his uh, uh, personal level of detail, uh, um, and it shows in the awards that he's won, but also to his main focus, which is the club. Everything he does is geared towards the club, not the townhomes. And more of the conversation or more of the back and forth is going on the townhomes. I know, and I've known Mr. Patterson for many years, that his focus is that club. That's all he, 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 he uh, stresses about because it's running a you know, business, it's running a club. Now in order for him to do or get to where he needs to be, he needs X amount of, of, of town homes and obviously you'll go back and forth on that number. And I understand that. Um, but if, if I could yeah, at least be a voice, change is going to happen in any uh, community, whether we like it or not. Some people don't like change. And it's, it's sad because change, again, managed by both parties, is inevitable and it's, it's healthy for any community. So if you could look at what Mr. Patterson is trying to achieve here, today he's trying to achieve a very small part of a very big project. If you could please uh, allow him to do at least that and then work with his team which is dedicated to, this, this, uh, to achieving this, this beautiful new uh, club and um, you know, hopefully approve the rest of the development. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Nico Winningham. I live at 2664 Northeast 26th Avenue, Lighthouse Point. I've been a resident here for about 10 years. So I was raised in Fort Lauderdale. I'm also a former member of the club, recently resigned. Um, I recognize that there's a great need for a new club there. There's no doubt. I don't argue that. But I just implore upon you all to please do not let some excessive density go down on that property. 11 next to 5 per, minute per acre is crazy. And just, by all means, please follow the, the master plan. Thank you. Thank you. Going once. <laughs> Going twice. Okay, we're going to close the public portion of the meeting. Um, back to my board. So, we've heard a lot of comments from the public. We've heard an excellent presentation. Remind you that we're here to deal with two items. Mm -hmm. Compatibility and density. Um, and a lot of the comments made are very relevant, but um, they are site plan oriented. We need to just try and keep that out of our mind. So, I'm going to go around and start with Fred. Yeah, I think, I mean, this goes back to, I know there's been a lot of support for the club, and I think everyone, almost everyone here would support some kind of updating to the club, but it is a question of at what cost. And you do, not that it's a, you know, uh, constitutionalist here, but you set a site plan or you have a comprehensive review for a purpose and it kind of sets your focus for the long term and I know you want to change all those good things around it, but you have a comprehensive site plan and I think the city laid out a pretty good argument why a lot of this project and the density of it would violate the site plan. Um, I, I really I like the renderings, I like how it looks, but the density of that on that property in my opinion is very high. I understand that doing, you know, giving or passing this with the 11 does not guarantee anything, but it does open it up to that property now having a land use for 11 units per acre. Uh, that's, that's very high density. Uh, it doesn't have any residential use now. Everything around it is single family at this point, and I, I think that's a lot to put in. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the parking issue be becomes a, a, a big issue. I, I think 
I won't speak for everyone on the board or the commission. I think everybody's okay with residential. I mean, that, that's some kind of give there. But just the density of the re residential, I think, would be an issue. And I, I'd have a hard time voting for 11 units for a proposed site plan. Good, thank you. Or land use plan, sorry. Susan? Yeah. Um, I understand and, and do appreciate uh, everybody's interest in getting an improved yacht club. I think virtually everyone in this city uh, is very supportive of that. However, and Bill mentioned, we're talking about compatibility and density. I don't have any problem with some townhomes, but the number that are proposed and much as Fred was saying, I, you know, Stephanie was very clear about that there isn't an absolute, they're not going to say that they're entitled to it, but it still creates a situation where the number of units that are proposed with this acreage to me is very incompatible with the single family homes in the area and the density of the area. And for example, I'd like to see maybe a dash line six dwelling units per acre. So that you'd have about 18 units in there, not 33. It is to me very incompatible. So I am in support of our planning staff's recommendation of denial because of the density proposed, not because there's some residential proposed. I think some residential would be nice to have, and I understand the need to perhaps have some of that as part of the overall project to improve the odd club. But the density that's proposed is far in excess of what I think is suitable for our city and our community and particularly the homes that are near the Yacht Club. So I cannot support the application as submitted. Yeah. Um, I actually have the exact same concerns that both Susan and Fred have. Um, I, you look at, you know, when I look at the uh, you look at the, the, the diagram up there, it looks like the majority of it is for the Yacht Club, but over half of that is actually the Yacht Basin itself. Um, or not half, but a, a yeah. good third of it is the, the Yacht yeah, Basin yeah. itself. The land portion where the club is, I think everybody in the community wants to see the club and wants to see the club redeveloped. And I believe that Mr. Patterson the way that he's going to be able to redevelop the club is to have some residential income from there in order to do that. That's I may or may that may or may not be true. That's just my my feeling is that the, the residences have to be there in order for him to do something towards the club. Um, my question earlier about what you know what were our options as far as density is there for as far as what the the dot dash mine was was is on those same lines basically so um i would i'm definitely for some residential in there i think that there needs to be some some residential and some change in there i think that that um that would definitely help out and in all, all aspects of what some a lot of the citizens brought up in the way of taxes and the way of helping mr patterson with the club itself but i think the main focus of everybody in there is for the yacht club itself as opposed to the residential side of it. Mm -hmm. So as it stands with 11 units per per acre as a possibility and then going, you know, saying that they're okay with that and that we can argue back and forth, I, you know, why, why even put that on the table if we're not, that's not what we're looking to do. That's, that's what I think. Um, I think, I guess, there's a little consistency here. I, I feel obligated to say a few things. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty much a planner at heart, for those of you that know me. So um, we planners tend to look at planning criteria. And, um, and so when you look at planning criteria, you tend to think of how communities should evolve and where density nodes should be. And 
has evolved the whole body of planning principles over many years um, in development of the whole context of planners being a profession. Um, there's been a lot of conversation. Various people from the audience have used many similes, um, the Yacht Club being one, I mean, I'm sorry, the marina being one. Um, but the marina is really a different place. It's a different animal, it's a different zone. It's up against high density residential condominiums. I mean, it's fairly dense and it's always been a fairly dense location. Um, I, I, I want to be cautioned because sometimes pictures create an end, an end view and then everything people do is to try and justify the means to get to that end. Um, as planners, we try and typically not use the economic criteria to drive a project. We try and use sound planning principles. Um, economic criteria is the province of developers because they put money in their pocket. Um, so we saw a beautiful picture of a, of, a, of a yacht club. And believe me, I'm a member of the club, and I live in the neighborhood just like everybody else does. Um, and I'm concerned about traffic, but I fundamentally believe that traffic's an easy issue for us to solve. Um, community solve it all the time. That gentleman with us. <laughs> so the real key is that end picture is justifying a certain requirement for a number of units. And that to me is what's driving this project. Um, everyone agrees that we need to have an improvement to the club. I agree that the club needs a facelift, it needs an upgrade. I think I forget what the first gentleman we wanted to bring us into the world of good clubs or whatever, his first comments. But the question is, that can be achieved in a lot of different ways. And how that's achieved will drive the economics of the project, which will drive the number of units that they need. So I kind of come back to, that's a variable that can be achieved in many different ways. That club is a very exotic proposal that's being shown to us right now. When I look at I have to agree with my colleagues. When I look at it from this pure planning point of view, it's hard to take the end point of a three to five unit per acre community and drop an 11 unit per acre density there um, when there's nothing up against it. I've heard arguments, and I'm just kind of saying all this, but I believe for the folks out here. Um, I've heard arguments that say, well, I could put a 100 unit hotel there. You can't, perhaps. I don't know. You could do anything you can in the CF zone. The reality is, we're not here to debate that. We'll deal with that when you come in with a site plan for that. I mean, that's really how that'll happen. So, and, and I've been guilty of this myself. I mean, I've sat in front of planning boards and said, but I can put an asphalt plan here if you don't give me what you want. But you know, that's when I'm on the other side of the fence. But I'm really here to protect our community. And um, so I have to agree with my colleagues that I believe 11 is too high. I don't want to offer it to you in the loop of right now and then argue about it later because that's what we're going to do. And I think Kenton made that point. I think it was a very stupid point. Because um, once, once the density is there, then we're arguing over, but I'm entitled to it. And why, is my, why are you restricting me in the site plan? And that comment's arbitrary and yada, yeah. yada, yada. So okay. the key is, yeah. since you don't have it and we can give it to you tonight, we could at least give it to you from a perspective that we believe will resolve the site plan issues, which we've been hearing about since four public meetings and so on and so forth. So that's kind of like where I'm coming from. So bottom line is I think you hear four members here and I think it's unfortunate you don't have more members here, but you have four members here and they're pretty consistent in their comments. May I speak? Yes, you can. Um, well, thank you very much. I think you can see that, um, that, that Terry and Jessica and their team, we've worked very hard on, on building goodwill in the community. And we hear you loud and clear. Um, I would ask that you, uh, instead of voting no, which clearly would happen, um, allow us to table it, allow us to work with, um, work with Michelle and her staff and come back to you with a proposal that, that hopefully will be more palatable from a density standpoint. We hear you loud and clear and we would just ask you that you give us the time to, to pull it back, table and come back to you with something that's, that's an alternate. David, I believe it has to come from the... They, that's Well, they've made the request. So yeah. right now your next meeting is February 5th. So if you'd like to, 
Uh, any of you can make, any of you except for the sitting chair, can make a motion to continue this matter until your February 5th meeting, at which time it'd be placed on the agenda. Whatever is scheduled to go to the city commission before then will naturally be postponed. Right. Or you can vote on it tonight. That's your choice. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Bill. Um, David, in a situation like this, do they, could they come back and say, well, we're still going to just go with what we have, and now you should vote? Well, we will not do that. We will commit to that. We will not bring this proposal back to you. Back. Okay. That makes me feel more comfortable then. And, and, what, and, and, and if, it, you know, if the title of the ordinance changes as a result of a change in any proposed land use amendment um, that they're going to request, we'll, we will re-advertise. Yeah. Um, and, mm -hmm. and go through all that, but you know, it would basically continue till February 5th if that's the board's pleasure based upon the representations that Ms. Tudegger has made. Okay. So starting as that as a continuance that you... We're requesting a continuance with a commitment that we will not bring this proposal back to you and force a vote. We would not do that. Okay, I feel better about it. Would you like me to make a motion? To any, any, whatever you want to do. Member of the board I, I would able to make, make a motion to um, continue, this re continue item. this item until our regularly scheduled uh, February 5th meeting of the Planning and Zoning Board. Before you need a sec you need a second for discussion. Mm -hmm. For a second to discuss. Yeah, just for discussion. Okay, yeah, we can't we can't discuss it until we have a second. Yeah, yeah. I, I just got dies for lack of a second. <laughs> okay. So, Kent, then you're a second. Yeah. Okay. And then, did you want to say something? Yes, my I guess my question is, <laughs> we before they come back on February 5th, we would like to see or have, like you said, you have to advertise whatever it is that they're going to do. We should. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. Again, we're prolonging this process, and this is something that, that we wanted to move forward, right? Um, February 5th, we should have something that, that we can make a decision make a decision on. So whatever it takes to do that, whether it's advertising it, naming it, rewriting it, whatever it is, that should be done for, it will. for, for February 5th, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think there's three possibilities. I mean, we have a motion on the floor for continuance, and the other yeah. possibility is they could vote and get a denial, or mm -hmm. the applicant could, at the podium, maybe make a revision and ask for uh, a, um, a different number of density um, and ask the board to consider that. That's a possibility. I think that would be legal. Um, oh. Uh, it, it, as long as the request is lower than what has been proposed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't I think you're going to for 25. <laughs> so, I just wanted to make that clear. So. Yeah. yeah. I think we would thank you for, sorry, but I apologize for walking away, but I, I think we we don't want to pull a number out of the air. I think yeah. it requires I some plan. Yeah, I was just saying what the options were yeah. so everybody understands. Thank yeah. you. And I would like whatever you come back with that it get reviewed by our planning staff that would, and our yes. city attorney so that we have a revised report and whatever information is germane to whatever that new number is so we can consider that. We, we, we agree completely. So I want to clock, so, the, so the motion for continuance has got some stipulations attached to it. One um, is that I believe you stated two, a couple of things. One, that you would work with Michelle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Two is that you would come back with a different proposal, Correct. probably lower. not 50 units in it. Lower. It will be lower. Right. Okay. okay. And that you'd come back to the February 5th meeting. That's correct. Yes. yes. So. Okay. Agreed. Yes. Yes. Yes, we agree. Thank you. Any other? Fred, do you have a comment? No. All right. We have a motion and a second. We could call for a vote. Fred McLean? Yes. Susan Motley? Yes. Kenton Heideck? Yes. Bill Gallon? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for your Catherine. consideration. Thank you.
Next on your Mr. Chair. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chair. Bill, I think we need to finish Oh, yeah. We have agenda items. The board is still here, but. Can I just. Uh, hello? Excuse the gavel. Members of the audience, could you please. <laughs> We, have, we haven't adjourned our meeting. Yeah, our meeting's not over, so if you want to leave, go, go quickly and go on. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're done with our application. Do I have any requests, public requests from the floor? Any public requests from the floor? I'm trying to get my voice out there. <laughs> no? Uh, zoning officials report. I have nothing. Michelle has Yay. nothing. City attorney's <laughs> report. Uh, just wanted to wish everyone a very yes. happy holiday season. Thank, Thank you. you uh, we'll see you in 2019. Safe and healthy. And it's always great to be here in the city of Lighthouse. Yay. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, okay. I'd like to take a motion for adjournment. So moved. So moved. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.